Hey everyone, welcome back. All right, today we are moving on to Genesis 27. We're going to be in verses 1 through 40. That's a lot of text, so I'm not going to read all of it. When I do read, we're going to be reading from the Christian Standard Bible. Um, but I'm going to be doing a lot of paraphrasing today, so I would encourage you to go pick up your Bible and read the text for yourself. It starts off, When Isaac was old and his eyes were so weak that he could not see, he called his older son Esau and said to him, My son. And he answered him, Here I am. Okay, so Isaac's old. It's guesstimated he's around 137-ish years old here. He doesn't end up dying for another 40-something years. So he was old, but he still had a long life ahead of him. And he just, I mean, when nobody knows when their death is going to be, <laughs> unless the Lord just specifically tells them. And so he didn't know that he was going to live another 40 years. But he, uh, he tells Esau to come to him. And he says, Son, come here. I want you to go out and I want you to hunt some of your tasty game and I want you to cook me some food and bring it back so that I can bless you. Verse 4, then make me a delicious meal that I love and bring it to me to eat so that I can bless you before I die. Okay, so we see here his eyes are weak, so he can't really see very well. He's old and he tells him, I want you to bring me some of your game that I love. And then he's going to bless him off of the fact that he went to go hunting, not the fact that he should have it because the birthright should be his or for any spiritual reason that the Lord said that he should have it. There's no good reason that Isaac is wants to give him this blessing, this birthright right now. And essentially, when you really kind of read between the lines here, Isaac is choosing to circumvent what the Lord has already said, that the blessing is going to go to Jacob. And for whatever reason, he's deciding to give it to Esau. So then Rebecca, she happens to overhear this conversation. And she knows that this blessing is supposed to come through Jacob, not Esau. And so she thinks, no, that ain't happening. I'm going to make sure that Esau doesn't get this blessing. I'm going to make sure that Jacob gets it. She says, I want you to go get some two young goats. Now, I'm going to make a meal. And I'm going to prepare it the way that your father likes. Okay, so she knows what he likes here. But she's told him to get two goats. Esau is going out to go hunting. Now, if there's anything that you know about someone who has an impaired sense, like they are losing their vision or they don't, they have impaired hearing or something along those lines, usually their other senses are heightened. But here, I mean, this would be like saying that somebody couldn't tell the difference between chicken or turkey or chicken or beef. Like, if you've been eating something, you know that they taste different. Wild game tastes different than goat. I don't know the difference because I don't eat either one of those. But if there's something that you eat regularly, they don't taste the same. And yet, Rebecca's convinced that she can trick him, which means she knows that it's not exactly what Esau hunts for him that he likes a particular kind of food, not necessarily the taste of the meat, because apparently he can't distinguish the difference between the two. So then in verse 11, um, Jacob answers his, Rebecca, his mother, look, my brother Esau is a hairy man, but I'm a man with smooth skin. Suppose my father touches me, then I will be revealed to him as a deceiver and bring a curse rather than a blessing on myself. Jacob isn't concerned with the fact that he's about to lie to his dad and deceive his dad to trick him into getting this blessing. He's just concerned that he's going to get caught and bring a curse upon himself. So he's, again, living up to his name here, and um, he is demonstrating that his character in some ways is not that great. And yet, the Lord has still chosen him for this blessing to come through. The Lord has already decided this. There's nothing that any of them can do, should do, or will do that is going to change what God has already decided. God spoke it. It's happening. And it doesn't matter what any of them say or do. So then we pick back up and she tells him, his mother said to him, you're cursed beyond me, my son. Just obey me. Go get them for me. So he goes out, gets a go. She cooks them. She gets some of Esau's clothes, gives them to Jacob. She takes some of the skin from the goats, puts them on Esau's hands so that he feels like he's hairy to be like Esau. And Jacob goes in and gets his father's attention and says, I, here I am. I've gone out hunting. I've got your food. And then Isaac is like, that didn't take very long. 
He's like, oh, but the Lord blessed me. <laughs> so then Jacob gets God involved and says, like says God blessed him, and so he he is like got no shame and his lying to get this blessing. So then Isaac calls him over because he notices that his voice doesn't sound like Esau's voice. So there's that sense. His hearing is fine. And he can tell this does not sound like Esau. So he asks to touch him. And he touches him and his hands are hairy. And so he's like, okay, well, his hands are hairy like Esau. So, all right. And then he's like, hmm. Let me come a little closer again. Let me, let me, let me kiss you. He said, Isaac said, please come closer and kiss me, my son. This is verse 26. So he came closer and kissed him. And when Isaac smells his, smelled his clothes, he blessed him and said, ah, the smell of my son is like the smell of a field that the Lord has blessed. May God give to you from the dew of the sky and from the richness of the land an abundance of grain and new wine. May people serve you and nations now in homage to you. Be master over your relatives. May your mother's sons bow in homage to you. Those who curse you will be cursed and those who bless you will be blessed. And then it says, as soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob and Jacob had left the presence of his father, Isaac, his brother Esau, arrived from the hunting. So here Esau comes back. He goes and cooks his kill and he brings it into his dad. And he's like, uh, who are you? <laughs> and he's like, I'm your firstborn son. What? Like, what do you mean? Who am I? He's like, well, who, who did I give the blessing to? And then they realize that Jacob came in. And so then verse 34 says, when Esau heard his father's words, he cried out with a loud and bitter cry and said to his father, bless me too, my father. But he replied, your brother came deceitfully and took your blessing. So he said, isn't he rightly named Jacob? For he has cheated me twice now. He took my birthright and look, now he has taken my blessing. Then he asked, haven't you saved a blessing for me? But Isaac answered Esau, look, I have made him a master over you and given all of his relatives as his servants and have sustained him with grain and new wine. What can I then do for you, my son? And then he does kind of give a blessing to Esau. And, and Esau does indeed end up being blessed. He probably has to work a lot harder, but he does end up being blessed. And so Esau is just distraught and upset because this birthright that he sold for a bowl of stew, he suddenly cares about. But he doesn't really care about it for the spiritual reasons. He cares about it because he wants all of the possessions. He wants the riches and wealth that come with this blessing. So where we really see the Lord's love revealed here is that some commentators say that this was a household where nobody trusted each other. I don't think that's the case at all. I think that Jacob and Esau, likely, they already had some issues. I don't, I don't think that was necessarily the case. I think that the, the, the real problem here was that they all lacked trust in God. So Isaac, again, he's about 137 years old. It's been almost 100 years since he married Rebecca, since the Lord blessed their union and chose them for each other. It's been a long time since he was a young man whose father when to sacrifice him in obedience to the Lord. So Isaac has apparently forgotten who the Lord is and that the Lord is who he says he is and he will do what he says he will do. And when he says something, it will come to pass. And he thinks that he can circumvent that. And I think that this is very reminiscent of much of what we see in scripture. And if you've been following Jesus at all, you know that it's hard to remember the things that the Lord has done for you sometimes and to trust him and that trust and strengthening your faith in the Lord comes in stages and it, it occurs over time. And if we don't continue to remember and recall the things that the Lord has done, it can be easy to forget those things. And it seems as though Isaac has forgotten here. And yet the Lord still used Isaac, he did end up using him to bless Jacob, but that blessing didn't come because Isaac gave it to him. It came because that's what the Lord wanted. And Rebecca is clearly not trusting the Lord here. She's trying to fill in the blanks for God and accomplish something that God does not need her help to accomplish. Jacob, not trusting that this promise is coming through him. He's okay deceiving. He's, he's totally okay with that. And Esau, he just wants his money. So none of them are really trusting God. And yet, 
the Lord uses this family. He has chosen this family. He uses this family. And our faith would not be what it is without this family. And as I've said before, the Lord is so loving and so kind that he still uses us despite our sin. And that we can be deceivers, we can be manipulators, we can be conniving in all kinds of ways. We can be sinning. There's so many different ways that we can sin. There's a lot of sin in this passage. And yet, the Lord can still choose to use us. He just wants our hearts. It's always been about that. It's been about that since the very beginning. He just wants our hearts. That's not an excuse to sin. But he knows we're going to. He knows we are. And he uses these stories to show us all that he will still use us. Even when we're still sinners, he will still use us. And that Christ died to redeem us all. If that's not good news, y'all, I don't know what is. And this is the Lord's love revealed to us. All right, y'all have a good day and I'll see you next time.